What's good boys, we're back with a brand new video. Before we get into it, I gotta do my shout out of the day. In yesterday's video, I asked y'all if y'all could sign a shoe deal with any company, who would it be? And CNC Vlogs says Skechers, because they make you run faster, jump higher, and if the power goes out, you know I'm making the building light up. That's straight facts. NBA, would you rather? Uh, these are some of my favorite videos to make. As you can see from their Instagram page, I've made a video on this Instagram page six times, just because I love the way it's run, and they always get me with some hard hitting questions. And I'm always up for a debate, so let's go into it. Would you rather start Zaza or JaVale McGee? I would rather start JaVale McGee uh, for a couple reasons, right? JaVale McGee, we know him as the Shaq and the Fool King, couple time MVP. But even though th this year he took a step back as far as his clumsiness and the dumb plays, there were a couple, but not as many as the previous years. He's actually took a step forward as a player. He actually looked good. Maybe because he was playing with the Golden State Warriors, it's hard to look bad on the team full with superstars. But he actually had a pretty good season by JaVale McGee standards. I'm not saying he's an all-star or nothing like that. But by JaVale McGee standards, he actually had a great season. And you know what? Zaza's dirty. And I don't I don't mess with dirty players. I, I, I can't. I can't put him in my star lineup. I wouldn't put him on my team, if we're being honest. Because it's just not right. It's just not right. So JaVale McGee gets the start because he can make me laugh. And he actually is an okay basketball player. Would you rather obviously throw a game for $50 million and not get caught or win a game for nothing? Man, this is this is tough because this kind of gets you thinking about your morals, right? Um, if you lose this game on purpose, I'm guessing this is like game seven of the finals. Let's, let's make a game seven of the finals. So it's actually this game actually means something. It's not a random regular season game. Game seven of the finals. Would you throw that game but get paid 50 mil or win it and not get paid at all? Um, so are you about the money? with no class or no money in class, I, I want the win. I want the win always. Because if I'm in the NBA, obviously I'm getting paid something. Maybe it's not the 50 mil that I would get for throwing one game, but I'm getting paid something and nothing is more satisfying. I hope I, I haven't won a championship than the championship. So because of that, I'm going to win the game for nothing. Nothing money-wise, you know, not money-wise, but because you're getting something. You're definitely getting something for your city, for your teammates, for yourself. Maybe it's not monetary, but it's going to be something. Which specialist would you rather be, three-point shooter or a dunker? I would much rather be a three-point specialist because dunking is cool and all, but there are plenty of great dunkers that do not make it to the league. There are pretty great dunkers that make it to the league, but aren't successful because they're dunkers you know they're just super athletic but if you got no other party game you don't mean much but there's players in the league right now that are not great at anything else besides shooting and you make it to the league and you actually make some pretty good money jj reddick 23 million dollars um that's not crapping on jj because i like him a lot but i mean the three three point shooting will improve everybody around you if you're a great three-point shooter the opposing team cannot sag off for you so the other four guys on the floor have more space and to do whatever they want to do it's a win-win for three-point shooting as far as dunking that's probably not even useful until you're on the fast break because me I, it says you're a specialist at dunking not creating a shot so me coming down court trying to get into the paint to dunk the ball is gonna be a struggle but me coming off screens will be a lot easier so give me the three-point shooting specialist which this track would you rather listen to Lillard's or Shaq now Lillard is a great rapper I'll give him that but Shaq now he may be the best NBA player turned rapper ever I like Shaq's music. Think about the, the diss track that he threw towards Kobe at that club randomly I wish I could play it for y'all but every time I play audio or NBA footage I get striked, and I love my YouTube channel. I'm not trying to lose it for that. But you can you can Google Kobe diss track or yeah Shaq diss track to Kobe. It's it's fire. Lillard does have some bars, but Shaq I, I'm putting Shaq over him. So let me listen to Shaq diss everybody in his past, like Charles Barkley. That that'll definitely be legendary. Would you rather have Lamarcus Aldridge or Kevin Love? Most of the comments said the same thing, and I'm gonna agree with the comment section with Kevin Love. Lamarcus is one of those players that. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of as far as like his overall game. I'm not a big fan. I don't know what he's like as a person, but his overall game, I'm not a big fan of. Kevin Love is a guy that I personally like. I'm thinking about his Minnesota days where he's 
fill in the stat sheet. I know those are worthless numbers because his team was losing, but you know he has the potential to, to actually be pretty good, even if he's by himself. LaMarcus, I'm not too sure. He's always been the second option as far as like Portland. He left Portland because he was the second option and with the idea that eventually Tim Duncan will retire and this will be his team in, in San Antonio, but then Kawhi Leonard emerged, so he's still the second option. At least Kevin Love has some experience of being the number one option, so because of that, I'm bringing in Kevin Love to my squad to build around. I don't know what other players I'll put around him, but we'll make it work. Would you rather get in a fight with Ben Wallace or Ron Artest? Is there a neither button? Get into a fight with, like me, squaring up with either Ben Wallace, 6'9 Ben Wallace, or with 6'7 Ron Artest, Metal World Peace. That's an L regardless. There's a 0% chance I'm winning either of those fights. But something tell me, since I'm guessing that Ben Wallace is stronger, I think I may want Meta or Ron, even though I know the elbow is strong. Oh, it's just an L, L, L. So I guess I'll go with Ron in hopes that I can survive the elbow, but I don't even know if I can do that. When healthy, would you rather have Brandon Roy or Greg Oden? I would rather have Brandon Roy. I'm usually going to pick the guard in this situation because I used to be a guard. Used to be. Yeah, I'm not a hooper no more. Um, so I'm usually going to go with the guard. And there's a specific clip that I'm thinking of in my head, but I can't show y'all because, again, I like my YouTube channel. I think you may do too. We don't want to lose these, all right? So I can't show the clip, but um, he was very clutch, very good at getting his own shot. He was just great, but, of course, injuries derailed his career. Same thing with Greg Oden, though. Uh, Greg Oden, we didn't even get a taste of Greg Oden's game. We got a taste of Brandon Roy a couple years where he was just good, and then Greg Oden, was just very, from the very beginning, he was injured. It kind of sucks. But um, if I was building a team, who would I rather have? Probably Brandon Roy, because at least I know how good he could have been. Um, with Greg Oden, I guess I don't really know. Would you rather have John Wall or Isaiah Thomas? Give me John Wall. I've said this a hundred times. I said this yesterday in yesterday's video. I believe that John Wall is the best point guard in the Eastern Conference, top three point guard in the league. Don't at me. Don't comment your, your reply because I know what I think and I'm going to stick to it 100%. So I would rather take John Wall. Would you rather have a great offensive player or a great defensive player? I know they say defense wins games, but I'm going with offense here because a great defensive player, think about it like this, all right? Oh, oh my God, this is perfect. This is perfect. A great defensive player with no offense. Tony Allen, not no offense whatsoever, right? Great, great defender. First team all defense, right? Or second team this year, I think. Great defender. Would you rather have him? Or a guy like James Harden, who's not who's, whose defense is very lacking, but he's an amazing offensive player. That's the way I think of it. So because of that, I'm taking the O because James Harden has won some games. <laughs> Him just being lethal offensively. So because of that, give me, give me the offensive player. Most of these comments say defense, which is very, very surprising. Because I think the idea of having a great defensive player is great, but offense... It don't get much better than offense. Would you rather be in a 40, 50, 90 club in your career or win two rings? So the 40, 50, 90 club is basically you shoot 40% from the field, 50% from three, and 90% from the free throw, free throw line. Not many players have ended their career like that. So that's that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Or would you rather have two rings? In this picture, they have Sasa Vujicic, who didn't really do much, but he's got some rings because he played with Kobe. Uh, individual stats or rings? That's basically what this is asking. I'm a man of rings, but that club is legendary. So put me in the club. Put me in the club, man. Yeah, give me the 40, 50, 90 club, and I'll be satisfied. Would you rather have the top three picks or Damian Lillard? Wow, okay. Um, first of all, it depends on one year. What year are we talking about? If we're talking about last year, I would probably take Damian Lillard because the last year's draft class was not great. If we're talking about this year, I'd probably take the top three picks because Markel Foltz and those guys are going to be good. Um, so it really just depends on the year for that one. Next. Who would you rather have returned to the NBA, Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant? Give me MJ. And I ain't even talk about prime MJ. I'm talking about 52-year-old. I think he's 52. I'm talking about 54-year-old MJ. Bring him back to the league, man. See what he can average. I think he could probably put up 10 a game. Easily. And we know Kobe still got it. He retired last year. I mean, we know he still got a little bit of game. But I just want to see what the GOAT can come back and do. So give me MJ. Throw him a Bulls jersey. We ain't trying to win anyway. Just let him play 48 minutes a game. That sounds pretty dangerous for a 54-year-old to play 48 minutes a game. But you know what I mean. Let him play and see how much he can average in today's game at 
54. Would you rather be a multiple time all-star that doesn't get much hate or a superstar that's heavily criticized? I think that criticism is some of the best thing a person can get. So because of that, I'm going to pick B. And I'm, I'm talking about constructive criticism. I don't need somebody telling me, you suck, Kenny. I need somebody to say, your shot was off, here's how you can improve it. Or you need to get your teammates more. I need some constructive criticism, not just some straight up blatant hate, all right? So because of that, give me some criticism, but I'm a superstar. Honestly, you think Kobe cared about what people were saying about him? Doubt it. You think MJ cared? Doubt it. You think LeBron cares? Maybe a little bit, but I mean, he's still LeBron, so it don't really matter. Yeah, give me, give me the criticism. So thank y'all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave it a like. For tomorrow's video, here, here's the here's the question of the day. All right, you, you're gonna be able to combine two NBA players, one starter and one bench player. Let me know the two players you're combining and tell me why you're doing it. Thank y'all. Be back tomorrow. Peace.